compact 800-seat cinema will take the place of one of the great picture palaces of Australia. Ambassadors will disappear, and Perth will lose not only a 45-year-old landmark, it will see the end of the 2,000-seater cinema era. Eric Nichols, who was associated with Ambassadors over the years from opening night in 1928, is himself retiring from the cinema industry this week after almost 52 years as a projectionist. Of course, I'm sad to see this beautiful building torn down, not just because of its beauty, but because almost every stone, every step, every seat in the place had a story to tell. And every West Australian must have been in it at one time or another. And I remember opening night so vividly, Premier Phil Collier officiating. It was just like a Hollywood premiere. Crowds in evening dress, bright lights, and all the glamour the city could muster. By the way, evening dress was worn on Saturday nights for many years. The program was Glorious Betsy and Honeymoon Hate. In the theatre itself, it was a new world for the crowds, 2,000 of them. It was laid out as a replica of the Florentine Garden, artificial pine trees, creepers, vines, doves, statues, even stars in the ceiling, and clouds that drifted above the audience. It was all breathtaking for cinema goers in the 20s and 30s. The machinery itself was a wonder, and we had to climb up and adjust it every so often for new effects. In fact, just above the upper foyer staircase, you would walk under famous bridge of size, and behind you, you'd see a glorious picture. And there was always a program of complete entertainment. For instance, there was always a type of variety show. There was Bert Howell and his orchestra. They provided the mood music for the films as well for there were no talkers at the ambassadors yet. There was a famous ambassador's corps de ballet. They were marvellous, spectacular. Entertainers too. Alwyn's curse of homicide was a spook at the ambassadors. He used to parade up and down the footpath with his braided uniform and cane, spooking the current program. It was a marvellous era. But of course the depression of the early 30s took its toll. Even ambassadors had to close down for some months. Thank goodness it wasn't for long. In fact, it sprang up again with new vigour, with Les Walden at the mighty Wurlitzer organ. I remember at that period, and during this period, a lot of furnishings were removed. The pines and the statues went. I left Ambassador about 1937 and went to New Plaza, which had just opened. It is the Paris now, but Ambassadors went on. Now, the Ambassador's curtain is down forever, and an era has been erased from Perth Hay Street, but not from the memory for years to come. <laughs>